Hello, hello. Hey, what's up? Not much. How you doing? Not bad. How hard was it to figure out to record on your side? Not bad. I mean, uh, in a sense, it should just be I, I have Audacity opened here, and then I just hit record, right? Uh, as long as it's set to the proper microphone. Um, what Mark Ball, uh, a.k.a. Fancy, always did, or did when the last time I recorded with him, and he recorded on Audacity through Skype, uh-huh. he went ahead and started the recorder. Yeah. So go ahead and do that. And then, like, as a test, just, like, talk into your mic and see if it gives you waveforms like it's recording you. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, it certainly does. Okay, go ahead and stop that and you don't save that recording. Like, reset everything and we'll uh, get ready to go. I'm already recording on my side. Hey, real quick, let me see if I can listen to it. Hold on. Just yeah. to make sure. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to make sure it's picking up my microphone and not the laptops. Sure, go right ahead. Cool. All right, man. All right, you're positive that's the mic? Yo, it came in too clear not to. Okay. So, yeah. All right. You know, there are some folks that get fooled by that when they record on Audacity the first time with a, a USB mic. So, as long as you have the snowball selected and it should tell you the type of mic it is on Audacity. Hold on. It says, yeah, I mean, it says, hold on. Let me, uh, let me, let me check something here. Yeah, go ahead. I'll pause it on my side here. Okay. I'm recording on my side and I am logging into YouTube right now just so I can give Skate Kiddio a little like. There you go. And the- I'm hey recording right now as well. It is Skate Kiddio. Skate Kiddio is the best. He helps fix shit for Matt. Another video. And this is going to be an unusual video. It is a tutorial. <laughs> I'm going to teach all of you Good how job, to kid. get your blue microphone to show up in Audacity. You hear him okay? So normally you yeah. would see some okay. other microphone inputs, but you would not see microphone. Blue... Skate Kiddio, you fucking rock. You did it, kid. You did it. <laughs> you got us a working. All right, you're you ready got to... us up and running. You ready to roll then? Yeah. All right, here we go. The following show will destroy your self-worth with excessive expletives, overtly descriptive sexual deviance, and more desperation for external validation than any so-called entertainment should ever be allowed. Two talentless losers who are about as insightful and provocative as a comatose jellyfish. Cinema Psyops. A tendency to deprave and corrupt those whose minds are open to such immoral influences and to whose hands a publication of this sort may fall. So if someone of a dirty bird gets hold of your stuff and it makes them a dirtier bird, then it's labeled obscene. Encouraging the lowest, most base, and animalistic of desires to all who will listen. Because we, as a society, have decided that a cinema psyops represents our base and vulgar impulses, and that acknowledging our use of it rattles our collective conscience. I was trying my best to make a positive impact in the lives of others, but secretly I was involved in a relationship that was taking over my life. Cinema Psyops. It was leaving me wounded and depressed, unable to even manage the relationships that mattered to me. Auditory vermin infesting every aspect of the human condition, spreading their filth and foul disease. The Black Plague Podcasting. Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. Forty weeks straight of Cinema PsyOps. I am sitting all alone in the studio because we are all about self-isolation here and self-gratification. Sitting across from me in the bunker in his own isolated pod is Matt. I think I have sniffles. I got the sniffles. <laughs> That's not one of the symptoms. It's like super rare to get the sniffles first with this one. It Just leave it to me to just end up getting a regular cold during the coronavirus. Hey, man, I had allergy reactions or something that was happening where like the, I was getting a tickle on the back of my throat. Yeah. I was like fucking dreading it for like the longest time. Then I realized that I was just in my office at home and I needed to dust. And once I did that, I was fine. Uh, that's um actually how all this started was probably allergies. Uh, we, we, we It's been nicer around so we were sleeping with the windows open a lot and that caused a tickle like in the back of my throat it first caused stuffiness and then i got more and more i slept on my back the more drainage went to the back of my throat which caused irritation and then working like i've worked now two straight weeks without a day off where i've been going into the my office trying to prepare for this whole thing 
and I haven't gotten a whole ton of sleep, and I think I just worked myself right into a cold. Well, this so, happened. This happened the last time you had a big push like this. Whenever uh, the last company you worked at had a big change in personnel and had to move some stuff around and consolidated offices, you got sick doing that just because you compromise your immune system with stress. Yeah, stress, not sleeping. Uh, then add in the fact with all this shit going on, and I'm a, a, a legit hypochondriac. Yeah, we joke uh, to, that you're not afraid of things, but like you are literally terrified that everything is going to kill you at all the time. <laughs> this is this is this is a fact. Uh, <laughs> like I couldn't go watching press conferences about when I was like 100 percent healthy. I couldn't go press conferences about the coronavirus without feeling like I was getting a sore throat. <laughs> you know what? I think you're not alone in that. There's a lot of us that are suffering a little hypochondria where we're worried. You know, yeah. maybe I'm coming down with it, you know, and I'm going to be real honest and just drop the veil before we really get into the show here. I'm not afraid of me necessarily catching it because of me, because I'm in the rage group where I probably more than likely will recoup unless it gets so bad I can't get a respirator. And, you know, it's so bad my lungs are being damaged. I'm not worried about me. I'm doing the isolation thing and definitely trying to stay away from other folks because I don't want to catch it and then pass it on to someone who won't survive it. I can't live with myself if that happens, dude. That's where I'm at. I don't care of me getting it because I I'm pretty sure I can fight it off and be fine. Um. <laughs> Yeah, as many hobos as you've made out with, you've got a pretty strong immune system. When all the STDs are trying to kill you, you're indestructible because it's only a small door from the push through. Indestructible. Oh, no, sir. The slightest (laughs) breeze could be indestructible. (laughs) Did you hear that, Smithers? Indestructible. Uh, So, uh, you know, I'm not worried about myself, but I'm worried about passing it to somebody who, who might not survive it. Or passing it to somebody who will then pass it to somebody who wouldn't survive it, you know? Yeah, especially in your line of work, you are pretty much up on people loving them strong while you're setting up their systems and all of that. I've been telling everybody for the last week because I'm pushing out so much new equipment uh, to, to set up for the possibility of, you know, if they decide to do a lockdown and everyone has to work from home, I've been pushing a lot of equipment. Well, I, it's not even so much me at this point. I don't know where this equipment's coming from. I don't know what warehouse. I don't know who touched it before me. So I tell everybody, wipe this down. Clean it with fire if you have to. But <laughs> Oh, come you on. Know. A fucking isopropyl alcohol on yeah. a napkin will do it. That's what I meant. But I'm just saying. I, I tell them to be very careful. Clean this before you use it. It, it, you know, start really cleaning your hands after you clean this. I just tell them just to be safe because this is so such a highly catchable thing that it's, you know, it, it's come down to now. I, I'm even so worried. I'm like, it might not be me handing it off, but it might be the equipment I'm delivering. Right. That's it's, and it's a distinct possibility because we're talking two to three days, despite what uh, Fox News would have you believe. Oh, no, it's not a big deal at all. Yeah. It's 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 uh, the flu's worse. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh my Christ. Okay, so I know a lot of people are tuning in to escape this, but we have to explain Cinema Psyops due to COVID-19, we have decided like most of your, you know, heartless corporations out there to send out a notification to everybody to let them know that Cinema Psyops will be business as usual but with a few changes. Uh, we worry about your health. Yeah. We, we want you to know that we have wiped down everything in the studio. That you will never touch anyway, just to make sure that we can continue to give you this show. Now, uh, in all seriousness, uh, we're going to continue doing the show, but we've decided to do this in basically a quarantine state. Matt couldn't be any happier because he doesn't have to leave his house. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I have a pile of video games right now begging for me to be quarantined. <laughs> well, and I'm talking like just for the show and everything here. More specifically, you don't like to have to come over here unless you can. If you can do it from home, you want to do it from home. And you know you- what? When it's nice out, I don't mind going over there. Yeah, it's, it's when I leave your place and it's cold and then I get into my cold ass car and I just want to go to sleep. That's what it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you figure out how to record on your end, maybe we can yeah. uh, maybe we can work something out where we'll do a couple episodes one way and then a couple episodes yeah. the other or whatever in the future. It's still better in the studio, though. It's yeah. just better in the studio. Yeah, it's always better for us to be in person, but we've gotten enough of a rapport going back and forth and we know where each other's going with jokes now after 240 straight weeks of this show that we pretty much know what the other one's thinking and we're going to get it going, you know? Goddamn right. Yeah. Through rain, wind, snow, pandemic. pandemic. 
I never thought we'd, we'd be able to add that little howdy do to our show, but here we are. Yeah. And we talked about this through text earlier, and I wanted to bring it up on the show because I feel like it's worth talking about. We are going to keep going until I am incapable of making a show. Whether I get dragged out of my house for something, total apocalypse happens that my equipment will not work, or I'm on a respirator and or dead, I'm going to keep doing this show every week because it's going to keep me sane. Or if I die, I mean, (laughs) you don't have much of a show without me, asshole. (laughs) No, I'll keep going. (laughs) <laughs> I'll weep and I'll cry on the air with whoever's trying to do the show with me and I'll be sad that I lost you but I will keep going you'll be like this this is such a sad moment I can't believe it anyway if you want to co-host the next 16 episodes let me know uh, I'll just draw names out of a hat yeah like if you get ill not necessarily like coronavirus or whatever or the COVID-19 yeah. you know like but if you get to where you can't do the show if you need to take a break from it because your mental health is just lost and you can't handle it anymore I'm still going to keep going but in some way shape or form the only way this show is going to stop is if I'm dead it's incapable of being done because the power is gone forever or for whatever reason I get dragged out of my house and not allowed to stay because the state of emergency became a fascist state and uh, I've said the too martial much law against, kicks in yeah the martial law kicks in and I've said too much about dear leader and they decide to kill me which is a distinct possibility as well oh shit me too fuck yeah <laughs> But barring all of those things, this show will carry on, and we will record it in some way, shape, or form. And, uh... and, and let me just say, I, I love the government. Um, <laughs> I think they're doing a damn fine job. And, it's too late. They have 239 episodes that prove you feel otherwise. Fuck. <laughs> I tried. I mean, listen, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Right. Now, I forget what exactly I was going to say before you said that not-so-clever joke. Uh (laughs) (laughs) That's what I do on the show, not-so-clever jokes. Yeah, exactly. So everything will continue as business as usual in a modified form for this show for as long as we possibly can. And uh, I feel that that's something that we both need to do for our sanity. I agree. And I hope that our listeners will continue to go on the ride with us. If you need to tune out for a while because you can't handle and you can't cope, that's great. But I know there's several of you out there that actually use us as an escape and get you through dark times. I've had a couple people tell me that. And uh, that meant the world to me to know that even if I'm talking all the stuff where I'm feeling down and dark, I've still helped someone else in that same situation and they got through it. So that's awesome. Agreed. So enough about all this sad stuff. Uh, we got a Laura Jemsner film this week. Yes, we do, sir. Yes, uh, we do. With uh, a Jack. A Fucking Pellants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's stop fucking around. We're going to do this review. We're going to play the Legion Patreon ad here. We'll have a little bit of music that fits with Emmanuel and the Deadly Black Cobra slash Black Cobra Woman slash Ava Nero. Uh, uh, Emmanuel and the Black Cobra is fine with by me. Yeah, even though it's Ava, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no Emmanuel here, but fuck it. <laughs> it's Laura Gemser, that's all that matters. That's we'll, right. We'll have some music that be fitting of the Black Cobra woman slash Emmanuel and the Black Cobra, and when we come back, we will have the trailer. This'll keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me Cutting a New Show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really. You can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon. And for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it. And thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room.
say that that music's vaguely racist? I mean, that music is vaguely racist. <laughs> so are you feigning outrage, or is this not feigning? I can't tell. It's, it's not really feigning. I'm not outraged. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> you know what is definitely disappointing, Matt? What's that? This trailer. It has all my clips. clips but it was in a foreign language so they can't that's, tell what they are oh, all right that, now we're that, thinking outside the box that's literally the only trailer that i could find and obviously everyone's probably like why the fuck did court play that because i like the song in the middle and if you actually watch the trailer it's all the highlights of the sex and nudity so you're welcome yeah you're welcome everyone find it on so. daily motion though because it's heavily edited everywhere on uh, youtube that i found it well that's that YouTube's really uncool right now. Or just find the film itself. I know it's a rarity and it's kind of hard to get your hands on. I had to commit Code Red to get it, which I'm not feeling happy about it. But I bought it through Ronan Flix, which is the brother that's not as big of a prick. I feel like there's a story there. Uh, Yeah, our audience already knows. The guy who runs Code Red is nefarious. Like, really, really just fucking rude and awful to his customers and to people. Um, that's no shock, and it's not really slander because that's true. He almost prides himself. Well, you can go it. fuck himself then. Yeah, but his brother runs uh, Scorpion releasing, uh-huh. and his brother apparently is much much nicer to his cool. audience, and so now all of his stuff gets sold through his brother. Pretty. Oh, much. that's nice. Good on that. Yeah, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about how lovely Laura Jemsner looks in this lovingly restored print. I mean, the Blu-ray looked amazing. Yes, yes, it did. And here we go. Emmanuel and the Black Cobra, or Ava and the Black Mamba, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it was uh, Ava and the Black Mamba, Ava uh, and the Black Cobra, and then um, I believe Ava Nera is like the Italian, original Italian title. Yeah. Well, uh, we uh, opening scene is a plane landing, and Ava, who is played by the lovely Laura Jemsar, and a man named Jules. Thank you, movie, just for having her there. Exactly. They are landing in Hong Kong. She wants him to bring his brother to her show that evening. 
Uh, we then cut to Jules is talking to his brother, who is Jack fucking Palance. So thank you, movie. I like Jack. <laughs> I mean, I like Jack Palance as much as the next guy, but if he's on screen, that means Laura Jemsner usually isn't, so... No I mean, this you. is a fact. How about this? It's a thank you movie that he did end up naked and stayed fully clothed throughout the whole fucking thing. Yes, although I'm sure there's someone out there in the world that wants to see Jack Palance naked. Well, I'm not one of them. At least for Jack's case, I hope so, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not one of them. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, not one of them either. Yes, and he, being somewhat of a, kind of a, and not a hermit, because he's very rich, but uh, eccentric, I guess, it doesn't really go out. You could still be a hermit if you're rich. It just means that you hide away from the rest of the world, and he's hoarding yeah. his gold. He's more like a dragon. He's hoarding all of his money and hiding away from the world. It's true, but he does agree to go. Uh, that night, we see a topless Ava. Thank you, Thank movie. Thank you, movie. Uh, doing a snake dance. Eh, yeah, I don't need the snake involved. Um, uh, I gotta, I gotta confess, Matt. It was, yeah. it was working for me. Does that work for you? Yeah, right. yeah. I just don't need it. Maybe it's a little too much pageantry for me. I don't know. Uh, uh, I happen to pretend that the snake is my oh, and that she's get, dancing with it draped across her, and I feel very good about that. There you go. Well, that's the. You know what? Good for you, Court. Good for you. Yeah, it uh, helps my self-image to pretend that my penis is as big as a boa constrictor. <laughs> I mean, it would do you no good in the real world, but in the fantasy world, that's for you. It would do me a lot of good if I were a porn star in the real world. It, it's I don't know if you if it was as big as a boa constrictor. I don't know if you have the blood flow to make it work. <laughs> Fair enough. By the way, we got a whole shitload of clips out of that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, let's see. So uh, he is mesmerized. Uh, Judas is his name. Uh, he is mesmerized by Ava dancing. Who wouldn't be? I mean, I am. Uh, she then Ava joins the table with a man and another woman. Uh, Judas catches her underneath the table. Her the other woman playing some thigh grabbing at oh, dinner. Oh, it's a little bit more than thigh grabbing. They start at the thigh and their hands move up, and yeah. then they cut above the table. And you see with the look on both of their faces that they are exploring each other's. All the while, this poor dumb bastard with them's tried to sew him the nice food he set the table. They're they're not interested in the food, buddy. No, they're uh, giving each other hand jobs under the table to each other's delight with no one any the wiser but Judas. Yeah, yeah, right? Um, so then uh, Ava goes back uh, and she changes into a nightgown. So uh, thank you, movie. Yeah, the um, slow disrobing of Laura Jemsner and the fact that this print, lovingly restored as it is, shows you pretty much every single <sighs> aspect of her body. Ooh. I she saw everything. Boy, did I ever. She, she is just a national fucking treasure. I'll tell you that. Oh, my God. Um, she's amazing. Of all the nationals. <laughs> <laughs> she is a world treasure. She's an she's intergalactic a world treasure. treasure. Yeah, she is, inter she is a treasure of the galaxy. <laughs> Uh, and then she lays awake and thinking about the snake dancing. As I was after watching the movie. Yeah, right. She also thinks of the girl from dinner and them going at it. And she decides to do a little five knuckle shuffle. So that's literally everything that I was thinking right after the movie anyway. So when I was watching her do this, I'm like, you know, I think we could hang out, Ava. I think you and I could be friends. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she would necessarily if this Ava character would be into hanging out with guys like us if you get what I mean I don't believe she enjoys the company of men no no I don't want to like I'm not talking like hang out like Netflix and chill I'm talking oh. hang out like you know I just want to hang out with her because I we have a lot in common and I think we would oh. be friends that is true okay that is uh, that's a fact we all probably have a lot in common with her at this point I mean um, we all like beautiful women and we all fantasize about her dancing with a snake so I mean we totally have a lot in common with her there's a lot to start off the with for like conversation pieces that's for sure right uh, <laughs> maybe we can get a coffee book together um <laughs> So anyway, uh, we cut to Jules and Judas talking, and this is our first clip. I'll tell you, Judas, I think you really prefer those damn snakes to people. Oh, come on, Jules. After all, I've been looking after snakes for 30 years. <laughs> if father hadn't left the management of this business to me, I'd, I'd probably still be the curator of reptiles back home. Hey. Sometimes I really think it's impossible to understand you. You're practically a millionaire. But until last night, you hadn't been outside this apartment for, I don't know, almost a month. 
You've been living here in Hong Kong for over five years now since father died. But I swear, the only friends you have at all are those blasted snakes. <laughs> Judas, aren't you interested about anything else? Um, Somebody's going to change you one day. <laughs> Damn you. I'm off to Tokyo tonight. Bye. Hello? Hello, Jen? Oh, good morning. I I'm sorry, but this is not Jen. Who are you? Well, let's just say that I'm an admirer um, from a distance. Who gave you my phone number? Oh, a friend. You met him on the plane. What do you want? Well, what I want is to... Uh, to invite you to lunch at your favorite restaurant. It's too early for jokes. I don't even know you. Oh, you're, you're not afraid, are you? <laughs> not really. I'm just curious. Oh. Well, why don't you just satisfy your curiosity and, um, and meet me at one o'clock? Jesus, could he be any fucking creepier? No, that was pretty fucking creepy, man. I uh, I don't know how you get any creepier than that. That was pretty fucking bad. I mean, like, if she could see the look on his face, maybe he would creep her out even more. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it, you know, it's bad because they're trying to play it as he's just fucking awkward as hell. He's not being creepy, technically. He's, he's being not, awkward as not fuck. not intentionally being creepy, and he's not yeah. trying to be. He's just super awkward. The problem is, is that awkward people always come across as creepy, and don't I know it? Yeah, don't I fucking know it too, man. <laughs> Fuck, that's like, I, w I was about to say, wow, well, that was me in high school, but really it was me in high school, me in college, me in my early 20s, and me now, so. <laughs> it's been you since you were socially interacting with other folks. Oh my god, is that not the fucking truth? Fucking Jesus. I mean, pot kettle black in this case. I mean, we are just a couple, of, we're real fucking awkward, bud. I <laughs> I mean, not many girls hang around you after you start a conversation with, so, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that, my wife loves me, but she does, thankfully. That, that many girls stick around when I go, have you ever seen the Saturday Night's main event where the Randy Macho Man Savage was coordinated as king? Have you ever seen that? Where are you going? If they do stick around these days, it's because they're also in the WWE, probably wrestling <laughs> on Next or some shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> And they uh, have seen that match and love it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, uh, they do have lunch and they talk about their lives. Uh, she states that she's been dancing with snakes since she was a child. He lets her know that the reason he knows her is because Jules is his brother. Um, so she agrees actually to go back to his house. Uh, they go back to his house to check out the snakes. And that is actually our next clip. Chris, do you live here alone? Well, not entirely. My brother Jules stays here when he's in town. Oh, uh, I'd like you to meet some friends of mine. Come on. All my life I've been fascinated by these creatures. They seem to epitomize fear, and I want to know why. I want to know... I want to know why fear exists at all. It doesn't have to. Yeah. This is a viper from Africa. You know, this could be a descendant from the one that slew Cleopatra. He's looking at you jealously. But he can be loving, too. And here, the adder from the Sahara. He lives in the desert. Oh, and this, the Fair de Lance from South America. He's beautiful and deadly. Last year, 10,000 men and women died from its kiss. I only had them about, oh, about a month. But we are gonna get to be friends. <laughs> well, we're all friends. You know, it's kind of fun, and, uh, and it's educational. Uh, do you find this exciting? You know, I, I, I knew that when I, when I saw you at the nightclub that you wouldn't be afraid. Oh. And now, the two stars of my collection. First, oh, our friend the python is resting. He doesn't eat very often, and yesterday he filled himself up. He had four choice rats. 
Oh, and second, over here. I'd like to leave. Why? I'm frightened. Not of the snakes, but of you. Oh. Let's have a drink first. Fear and fascination, you know, they're really the same thing. I think it was... I think it was Oscar Wilde who said that... It's like supping with tigers. Why don't you come and live here? Uh, you have to understand, I'm a very rich man, perhaps richer than any man you've ever known. And I'll respect you. I don't understand you. Yes, but you will. You can have everything you want. Everything you ever dreamed of possessing, given to you freely, without demands and no conditions. Why? It gets lonely here sometimes. Besides, I like the scent of you. Goodbye. But we'll meet again. I don't know. But I won't be able to forget you. Thank you for showing me your home and your friends. I really must go. Huh. I wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud. Yeah, just when I thought he couldn't make anyone feel more creeped out and awkward, he, he does it. Why is it every time I hear Jack Pallets talk, I think of Jack Nicholson uh, when he does this Jack Pallets impersonation in Batman, when he grabs his number one guy and goes, remember, you are my number one guy. Because you were in the perfect age range when that movie came out to be obsessed with that movie and probably watched it as much as I did, and that's what I know Jack Palance as anyway, so... Besides City Slickers. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. Batman was my first exposure to Jack Palance. Same here. Yeah, like, and ever since then, he's always been, you know, the guy from Batman that Jack Nicholson kills to become the crime lord. <laughs> it's still, it's just a, a great scene, because then the guy walks away and goes, you have a number one guy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know why. It makes me chuckle. All right. So anyway, the dude, uh, then we cut back. The dude who was at her table that first night starts slapping Ava around. So now I already hate this guy, and um, I'm going to I kill him. I thought this was how they played at first, and then I realized he's just an abusive asshole. But, yeah. He tells her that he doesn't mind her going around with women, uh, but when he she goes around with another man, it makes him too jealous. <laughs> Mostly because uh, he's probably afraid of the lack of penis he has. Yeah. Well, anyway, she just lays there and allows him to pretty much hump her. That's a rape. While he's in you know, his suit, he doesn't even get changed, so he's one of those type of guys. So you can tell he's just weird, and she zones out for it. That's a rape. Which I believe she probably does with sex that's a with rape. most that men. Is, that is rape. What is, what is happening there that is, is rape. Yeah, that was definitely, that's a raping. That's what rape is. I believe any sex with men with her is rape because I don't believe she is heterosexual. She does say that she has given her body for money, and I believe that that is consent. She just doesn't enjoy it because it's for money, and that's why she's doing it. So I wouldn't consider that necessarily rape. Yeah, if, that's if, true. If she is doing um, it as sex work just because she needed the money, then that's maybe she f is repulsed by it, but she's doing it for the money, so that's kind of different. That's It's not rape. It's not good, and you wish she didn't have to do it. But because I believe her truth is, is that she is not She says it very specifically that she only is attracted to women. So that is by a very definition. Yeah. She is not heterosexual. She is lesbian. Yeah. That's his fact. Uh, so anyway, she then uh, decides after all this herbopple, she is going to move in with Judas. Uh, they Jules tells her they get an account set up for her with money in it. Uh, that they're going to take her out and buy her stuff and all that because that's what Judas wants. Okay, so Judas uh, so we, just loves her because she dances with snakes and she is another exotic thing that he's decided to collect and take care of. He's basically caging yeah. her and keeping her in a glass box that he can watch her. Yeah, I think he is uh, unlike, but I think the reason it interests her is unlike most men in her life, he's not after her body or anything he's more into the fact that he's finally found uh, a woman who is interested in the same things he is which is snakes you know his biggest hobby honestly i don't even think it matters that she's female i think it's that she loves and handles snakes as tenderly as he does and that's that's all he cares yeah. about i mean like he doesn't even seem like he's into sex at all no yeah you're right it, i think it's just somebody who he's he, he i don't think he's ever found another person in his life who he's uh 
uh, cared about like a friendship like that who's been into the stuff he's into. So, um, so I, I think he's just super excited about that. And it doesn't help um, that she's hot as fuck. I'm sure that has something to do with it, but he doesn't seem to want her for sex at all, and it's sex doesn't even seem to be on his mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so then we cut to Jules and uh, uh, Judas are pretty much showering her with the finest things in life, whether it be clothes, jewelry, a car, all that kind of stuff. It's a little montage of buying stuff. Jules uh, and Judas are talking about Ava. Uh, Jules says that he feels Judas uh, uh, Judas is just adding her to his collection. Basically what we just said, so. Yeah. Also adds in that she may be the most dangerous one out of his collection. So. Because she's a female of the human species. Yeah, that, that whole thing. Misogynistic. Which, yeah, way to be sexist. Yeah, yeah, way to be misogynistic, sexist, you fuck. Uh, Jules is a pretty shit person. He's not wrong. He's just a sexist. <laughs> I think that makes you a sexist. No, no, no. I'm just saying that she is the most deadly of all of his collection. She is cor- he is correct there. Oh, well, yeah, because she's right. human. Not because she's just a female human, just because she's human. No, no, because she's, she's just human. Deadly. Humans are the most dangerous things on yeah, this planet. Yeah, absolutely. Aside from viruses now, apparently. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, still, though, I mean, let's watch what humans do to try to beat this virus to the planet. Ooh, checkmate. Yeah. Ava shows up. While Judas is playing with his snakes in our next clip. Ava. Come here. And very slowly. How did you know I was here? I didn't. He did. He scented you. This is my favorite. It's the green mamba. It's the smallest one I have, but the most dangerous. Very different from the animals that you used to dance with. As you can see, is its fangs are still intact. He can kill in a second if he wants. Why should he want to kill? Well, there are two reasons. If he's attacked. And the other? The scent of fear. He knows if you're afraid, and then... And then he attacks. And you're not afraid? Oh, I've spent most of my life looking after these. Always in the hope of finding the reason for fear. But you're different. Your courage is natural. I think that's what attracted me to you. I almost forgot we're going to have a party tomorrow night. A party? Yes. I thought you hadn't any friends. Apart from these. Oh. Uh, well, this was arranged by Jules. He, uh, he thought perhaps you were lonely and so he wanted to. So he invited some people for you to meet. And he only made, <laughs> he only made one demand. What's that? Well, he, he wants me to cover these, uh, these little friends of mine, so as not to frighten the guests. <laughs> well, there you go. He's a little less awkward because he's talking to her about snakes, and this is where they kind of really convalesce. Yeah, this is kind of where they kind of, you know. And then he gets a little playful with her. You know, he kind of kisses her on the cheek and stuff, and that's nice. It, it just seems really innocent, but then Jules is watching in the background like a real creep. Do you think that Judas possibly is a closeted homosexual, and that's partially why he's attracted to her, too? No, I believe Judas is asexual, but he craves a connection that I don't think he ever thought he could make. Most likely because he's, you know, when father, his dad left him this company, you know, and he, he was kind of thrusted into running it. I believe then he never thought he would find anybody who actually loved him. I don't think he has any need for sexual contact, but I think he has a need for command, companionship. And I'm sure all the women he ever ended up around because of his brother Jules were all just, you know, Probably women looking, you know, to use him for his money, but, uh, you know, then they, they probably did the wrong thing and tried to throw their bodies at him. So that's probably why he surrounded himself with the snakes was that's the only thing that understood him and the only thing he understood. Uh, it's possible. 
I, I, I could definitely see that. Yeah. He seems like he's a bit of a extroverted introvert where he wants to yeah. make connections with people. It's just that he can't do it on his terms. No, yeah, he he just he doesn't know how, but yeah, I I still am under the belief that he is definitely asexual. Yeah, that that kind of makes sense. But, I got the inclination that because of the way that he's talking with her and like he has this kinship with her and that she is also or that she is homosexual, I was thinking that maybe he was also. But if that's where the movie was going, it didn't really seem like they wanted to play it up. So the asexual explanation is probably the closest we're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that night at a party, Ava's introduced to Candy and her brother. Jules comments to Judas how he, you know, everyone's looking at the prettiest girl there and Judas owns her. Uh, to which Judas responds that no one owns Ava. So, I mean, again, whereas Judas started being really creepy, the more and more he talks, the more I'm like, okay, he's just an awkward dude. But, I mean, he's way more understanding than fucking Jules is, who's a fucking maniac. Yeah, he's trying. He really is. He's uh, totally trying. He's yeah. just failing miserably at it they t- you would talk about the money aspect of a lot of things and you tell jules is a lot is really jealous of judas because i think jules feels like he runs the business uh and you know judas can even tells him this is how the will goes and even 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 states that you're going to get more money it's coming it you just have to wait uh, because of how the will was created but jules just isn't ha- you can tell jules has a lot of anger in him about whatever. Yeah, I do believe that Jules resents the fact that their father left the business to his weirdo brother who he doesn't understand or care about. I, I think that may yeah. have a lot to do with it. I'm not really 100% sure, but, you know. And it, it, it sounds like the business has done well under Judas, so I think he's also angry that how can his brother be this weirdo but yet be so good in business? Yeah, that's that's a distinct possibility so, as well. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Because Jules fancies himself this ladies' man world traveler, yet he can't get the respect in the business world, I bet, that his brother gets. Because his brother, while being kind of an introvert and weirdo, is fucking probably really good and has a lot of respect because he can make yeah, money. Yeah, and he's actually a decent human being and he treats other people with respect, which is something that the main brother can't even fucking do. Yeah, Jules can't understand that, treating people with respect. That's not something yeah, particularly he gets. Women. He just like He doesn't understand what the fuck his brother is even doing respecting a woman that clearly should just be used as an object to him. And Jules is about ready to get even more on my shit list, and I'm sure yours here in a second. Because Ava, Candy, and her Candy's bro goes outside, and Ava starts rubbing the... She's sitting in the middle and starts rubbing the bro's thigh. and So I guess maybe she is kind of into it, because Ava starts coming out to the bro, the brother, and then Candy starts coming out to Ava, so they're all kind of rubbing each other. And then Jules steps in to break up the fun and bring her in, and he stops from Ava being in the middle of uh, an incest sandwich. Yeah, um, I'm definitely into this. I'm, I'm digging it so far. I know, and I was like, wow, I watched that. I'm like, this might happen. I'm like, this could be Court's favorite part. And then Jules shows up, and I go, well, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be hard to make Jules the most hated man in Court's <laughs> life right now. I mean, I don't hate Jules for that. I mean, cock blocking is a thing that everybody does, not intentionally. But I feel like Jules yeah. did this intentionally. He did it intentionally because he's jealous of anybody getting a shot at Yeah, that's Ava. very much apparent. Um, and I'm just saying maybe, God, maybe Ava isn't just a strict lesbian. Maybe she is bi, but she's more into women than men. But this this younger you know, guy who's Candy's brother, maybe it's like, hey, you know, he's so incredibly non-threatening that it's, it's you know, fine. Well, she said she doesn't like sex with men and she has done it, you know, more or less, but she's never really enjoyed it. And I feel yeah. like she wanted the sister so bad she was willing to deal with the brother to get at her. I know, that's just weird because I'm pretty sure, like, you know, the bro could have just left and she could have had the sister. I'd, I'd, I've never heard of, like, well, it's a package deal. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to make incest sandwiches, it kind of has to be, right? <laughs> yeah, well, roll tide. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, the next day, Jules introduced Ava to his friend Jerry. Um we get a nice little uh, swimsuit scene where she invites Jerry to go swimming, and she goes, you can have one of my swimsuits, and then helps her put the swimsuit on. So Thank you, movie. Yeah. And then after swimming, they go for a massage. Also, thank you, movie. Let's let's talk about this. Um, yeah, we got to really dig into the devices used for massaging, quote unquote. The devices used for massaging are devices used for female pleasure. 
And male pleasure, too. I mean, you know, okay. for everyone's pleasure. All right. It's First of all, pleasure. they start with the uh, vibrating massager thing that gets strapped. The wand. Oh, no, they start with the thing that straps onto the hand first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. The hand. The wand right. comes. You're, you're right. Yeah. I, I'm but the one that goes on the hand is pretty standard in a lot of massage parlors where they just kind of enhance the massage by having, like, these things that strap onto the back of someone's hands for massaging. And, yes, they get used in sex parlors for hand jobs as well, as Matt was alluding to. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, that's where <laughs> Matt knows for that type of device what that's from hey no i don't I've never had that kind of money never had that kind of money is that what you said i never had that kind of money so i wouldn't know about that <laughs> well there was that one time that i treated you in tijuana remember oh actually no what was i on <laughs> uh this is very important. Um, <laughs> let me put it this way. You really, really dug it so much so that you volunteered for the donkey show. Oh, 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 okay. Ecstasy mixed in with some heroin. I got yeah, you. I, I got you. All right. Cocktail. Mm -hmm. That's what we call the St. Louis special. <laughs> Okay, and then they do that, like, they rub them down with the vibrating hand thing for a while, which is extremely yeah. erotic, and they're both staring deeply into each other's eyes while it's happening, and everybody's really uh -huh. enjoying this, uh, watching this, and it's very sensual and very sexual and very fucking hot. Yeah. And then yeah. they switch over while the ladies are still laying on their stomach to the ever-popular Hitachi magic wand. Yeah. Oh, and, they, they, and then the, the women flip over because they were uh, on their stomachs. Uh, Ava does first. Ava flips over first because the Hitachi wand yeah. got popped and then, out and she recognizes those good vibrations. <laughs> Jerry then yeah. follows suit. And there's a lot of eye contact between those two. And it's... Yeah, they are staring at each other, getting this erotic massage, and the Hitachi wand, they pretend like they're going over their neck and, you know, on their shoulders and stuff, like they're actually using the wand for that. And then it starts coming to rest on the nipples and things, which the ladies seem to really be into. And then yeah, 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 yeah. the wands yeah. go south, and the ladies seem to start to really enjoy the massage, but they're hinting at it, but you don't actually see the wands being used on the crotch. It just goes across the hip bones and stuff like that, but let's face it, that wand, that's what it's for, because it's such a strong yeah. vibration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost guarantees clitoral stimulation to the point of orgasm. Exactly. I mean, that's what that wand is famous for. And thank you. Yeah, this was a hell of a sequence that will definitely have me watching this movie again with blisters on my hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, whew. So um, then we cut to dinner time, and that's actually our next clip. Good, I need the break and some electrolytes. Right. Well, Jerry... Eva tells me that you're studying Chinese medicine. That's right. It's a fascinating subject. She works in a clinic for the poor as a volunteer. How unpleasant. It doesn't sound very glamorous. I think it's wonderful to be doing something useful. I thought uh, perhaps you were content being so ornamental. Eva's more than ornamental, Judas. You don't appreciate her enough. Thanks, Jules. It's nice to be appreciated rather than collected. Collected? Well, now really, Eva, I didn't realize you felt that way, darling. It's getting late. I really have to go. I'll drive you home. I can get a cab. Oh, no, no. Eva wants to show off her new car, don't you, darling? You mustn't refuse her. <laughs> It's been a marvelous evening. It really has. I'm taking you home. Oh, no, no. That's all right. <laughs> Jerry, when you know Eva like I do, you know you can't say no to her. Don't be nasty, Judas. Come on, Jerry. I'd really like to drive you home. We can have a talk on the way. I won't be gone long. Good night. We'll get together soon. Good night? Eva seems very interested in that girl. I wonder why. Uh, and you seem very interested in Eva. I wonder why. Jerry. With me, you can be frank. You've given up your studies because you haven't any money. And that's why you're going back to Newport tomorrow. The ticket's in your bag, isn't it? <laughs> Open your bag and show it to me. <sighs> what on earth are you doing? I mustn't lose it. Okay, the plot doth thicken. So yeah, she throws her plane ticket right out and they drive off, so. Yeah, that plot doth thicken. I like that line where Jack Palance's character, Judas comes back or kind of claps back at him. I forget what it is that he says, but it made me laugh when we were playing the clip. It seems you're really interested in Ava. I wonder yeah, why. Yeah, because he said <laughs> something about the other lady, like Ava being interested in the other lady, and that's how he, he claps back at him. Yeah, and Jules is just a jealous prick. 
I really like the way that Judas looks at him and Jack Palance's little shitty and grin thing that he does when he says that to him. And I think that's another thing that Jules is jealous of his brother. While his brother is totally awkward in his day, all this stuff. He's also smarter than Jules, and he's a lot more perceptive. Which is why he was given the company, I'm sure. And I'm sure it's why he's such a good businessman, because he can play this act of, oh, I'm this awkward, quirky guy, but he's perceptive about the people around him. I think another reason why he's a, probably introvert is he knows people really well and deems most of them not worth his time. I feel personally attacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it, it, and you should um you're <laughs> i mean that's that's a little too close to home there matt um i know you didn't mean to be that way but it sure felt that way because that is you uh, <laughs> okay i'm guilty <laughs> so uh later on judas is showing some of his uh, snakes to candy jules then comes by candy and says he wants to meet up with her later and she is totally down for that then we cut to uh jerry is stating that after being raped, she no longer enjoys sex with men. Ava pretty much tells her that she loves her and uh, sh that she will also give her money for school. So this is a very nice thing happening here between these two ladies who've probably been hurt by a lot of men in their lives. This was heartbreaking to watch. Yeah. Um, I know that this is a fact of life and this is a reality for a lot of women because the percentages of them that are sexual assault survivors is astronomically horrific. It... <sighs> It felt out of place the way that they were delivering it. I felt like they needed to have a different way about going about this conversation. That, like, maybe this should have happened before they longingly stare at each other's eyes while being masturbated with uh, Tachi wands. That's just how you build that trust to be able to talk about this kind of stuff. Well, I know it is always easier for me to open up after I nut. I get that. Yeah, especially looking into each other's eyes. I don't believe we'd be doing the show unless we went to that parlor <laughs> together that one time. Okay, so now you remember it conveniently. Then uh, Jules and uh, Candy are getting down, and Jules grabs one of the snakes while her eyes is closed. She doesn't see it. It's kind of like rubbing on her body, and she's into it. But she doesn't know what's rubbing on her body, apparently. Uh, she probably thinks it's his cock. Probably. Only she doesn't remember it being this big. <laughs> exactly. And by the way, he's using the smallest green mamba snake that's the most deadly. No, he's not using the deadly snake. The deadly mamba. He's using a different one, but it's still poisonous. Oh, you're right. You're right. Different one. I'm sorry. It's a different one. Ava brings Jerry to a all-women's club. Uh, then we cut back to Jules. He's playing with the snake on Candy, who then opens her eyes, freaks out when she realizes what it is. Uh, we then cut back to this nice little lesbian bar, and Ava and Jerry uh, dance. Uh, but then it's time for a show with the Kim sisters, who do a very pr provocative number. Holy shit, this vastly became my favorite part of the film. This was erotic and awesome. While the ladies in the club also started holding each other and kissing one another, so it was like, wow. This is yeah, a they were all getting turned on, so they started reaching for each other watching the show, which was very much an erotic and awesome show. Yeah, man. it was uh, That was hardcore, man. That was... Uh, I had to pause to get my breath. It doesn't go super hardcore, but what it is is the best of like a burlesque yeah. style dance that gets extremely saucy and erotic while they're doing it. Exactly. Yeah. It was incredible. And I'm not being facetious about it. And I'm not being just because I'm trying to be a pervert about it. Because no, it was good. Aspect of it too. It was just that well done. And they are very talented women and they were lucky to get them in the movie. Yeah. It was very intimate. It helps that they're twin sisters too. That really turned me on that they were dancing like that with each other. <laughs> not going to lie. Anyway. Ava later gets a message that she has to come back home immediately. We find that Candy is unconscious as a doctor checks on her. Jules blames the snakes getting out. The doctor calls for an ambulance. Uh, after it cuts to, we find out that Candy will make a full recovery. Um, Judas then tells Ava that he has business in Singapore, and Jules is heading out to Tokyo, so Ava will watch over the snakes for him. Uh, Jerry and Ava have a lunch date, and that is our next clip. Let's go to my place. And what will Jules and Judas say? They're both away. I've given the servants a weekend off. We'll be all alone. I don't understand why you're not frightened to be there with those horrible animals. <laughs> they don't frighten me. There must be a reason why you're so brave. I'm not brave. Life has taught me not to be afraid of what many people consider frightening. That's all. But let's not talk about that today. <laughs> so that's what my work is like. There's no money in it, no salary of any kind. 
But there's great satisfaction, a sense of doing something to help other people. <laughs> what more could anyone want? Compared to you, I'm totally useless. My work doesn't benefit anybody. Just cheap drills for tired businessmen. I was glad to give it up and move in with Judas. In a strange way, I love him. I never knew my father. He must have sent money to my mother because she didn't work. But when I was 12, she left me with an old lady who lived near us and went off with a man. I never heard from her again. The old lady is the one who taught me how to handle snakes. She had danced with them when she was younger and had developed a fondness for them. I started dancing when I was 13. I was more afraid of the people watching than the snakes. When I was 14, the old lady died and I was on my own. It was a lousy existence. I can hardly remember what it was like being a virgin. A kid that age, no one to keep an eye on her. But I learned. It was pretty awful, but I finally got a break. And I began to dance in some better places. Of course, there have been times when I've given myself for money. But no man has owned me. He may have bought me my company for a night, but nothing more. But what about Judas? It's different with Judas. Somehow it's all right. So she's clearly stating that she doesn't have sex with Judas in this, I think. Yeah, it's different with him. It's all right. I think it's because of the way he treats yeah, and her. I don't think that he expects sex. She doesn't even state that like she's having sex with him. And like she said, she would only keep company with a man for them to pay for the evening. They could only have her for them, but they never owned her. And it's the same thing with Judas. And when she says it's different, she's literally like stating, as far as I'm concerned, that Judas's wants have nothing to do with her body for the night or anything like that. And therefore, it's different. At least that's how I took it. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Uh, we also we need to um, talk about. I mean, we can't blow past the tragedy of Ava's backstory of her life as being a snake dancer who was being used and abused. She said she can't even remember when she was a virgin and she started dancing yeah. when she was thirteen. So that implies she has been being abused by men since she was thirteen in some way, shape, or form until she got a break to dance at a club where she wasn't treated like a sex object for people just to fuck. That's disgusting. Like, yeah. It's gross. It's just so awful. Fucking. And it's it's more the norm than what we would realize, I would say. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, that's a, a fact, I think, of life we right there. We can do better than that um, as human beings. Yeah, we need to do better we than must. that, motherfuckers. Absolutely, it's disgusting. Because, yeah, you know that's probably real. Like, a real life happening for people, so... Yeah, I mean, there's so many people that are suffering from that. And, shockingly, there's probably some folks in our friends our circle of friends that have had something similar to that happen to them, unfortunately. Yeah, I would, uh, I would, uh, agree on that. Definitely. Um, so they walk around and they see a dude skin a live snake and then chop it up and then cook it and they start eating it. And that's how you get the coronavirus folks. That's where COVID-19 did come from. Yeah. Yeah. It came from snakes. So yeah, yeah. That was pretty so poignant th that we're watching this. Uh, the live snake skinning thing, fuck off movie. We didn't need to see that. Yeah, that fuck you movie. I didn't need that in my life. I don't need to see an animal, no matter you know what it is, get skinned alive. Yeah, you Did fucks. They have to do that? I, I don't understand. Like, is there a reason no. why? Like, I know you boil lobsters alive for some reason or some shit yeah. that you have to do that. Not anymore. They don't. They literally don't anymore. No, no, no. Like real chef does that anymore. They now very quickly kill the lobster you know they they pretty much just stab it and kill it in the brain real quick and then they put it in but the, yeah like gordon ramsay even went on a whole thing about how you know no no self-respecting chef puts a live lobster in boiling water anymore because that's fucking horse shit no yeah, reason for it i mean skinning the snake alive like that i think it would ruin the flavor and why would you even need to do that it doesn't make sense at all i think it was just literally trying to do a little bit of exploitative um, oh, it's definitely an exploit exploit yeah, move. It's like you're not doing a. Let's do a little gross out too yeah, while we're at it's it. It's not you know? a fucking cannibal movie. All you're doing is being fucking racist about the place that they're they're at. If that's you know if that's not the case that they they don't kill the snake first and that's how they do it, then that's fucked as well. And I wouldn't want to eat it just because that's an unnecessarily cruel. Yeah. No, I agree. Definitely. Uh, it's fucking horrendous scene. Fuck you, movie. I didn't yeah, want to it see doesn't it. even need to be in there. It, it literally adds it, nothing to the film other than shock value and like we got to compete with the cannibals that are the cannibal films that are doing the same shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Well, back home, they strip down, and then they get into some shower time, uh, and they're getting real soapy, all the while Creepy Jules is there watching. Until um, Creepy Jules shows up and they're showering, this is my second favorite part of the movie, and then he shows up, and then I feel like a creep, because like he's enjoying watching it, and so am I, and I'm like, God damn it, movie, stop doing yeah, that. But at least we're supposed to be enjoying watching it. <laughs> right. I mean, like in real life, I'm not just going to watch them shower like that. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to respect people's privacy. I'm not going to spy on people. Right, like I'm that. going to at least knock first and ask them if they know how to use a loofah, and then when they yell at me to get yeah. out, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to ask them if they need a hairbrush with a long handle. Then I'll leave. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask them if they need a little help reaching their backs, yeah. and then clearly then I'm going to leave in a hail of soap suds. I'll ask them if the hot water is hot enough. Just want to make sure that the water isn't too burny, so I'll get in there nude as well just to make sure, and then I'll run away. <laughs> uh, that's going to be one of those outtake uh, things because none of that's really usable here. No, none of that. Um, then they feed the snakes. Um, we see an actual snake eating a live uh, rat or a live mouse. Okay, I know that folks have a problem with this as well, but uh, when you tend snakes, this is how you feed them. Most snakes live off of yeah. living creatures, unfortunately, like that. This part did bother me as much as the snake no, part I did. don't think we needed to... See because this is an animal eating another animal. This is what is the animal right. kingdom. Right, we could have seen them putting the mice in the cages, sure, but we didn't need to see yeah. the mice being devoured by each of the snakes like we did. Like, they really spent a long time yeah. filming it. And this isn't a nature yeah. documentary. This is another one of those competing with the cannibal things. This at least no, you're, it, you're, it at least matches story wise because she would help take care of the snakes while Judas is away. So it would make sense that you, she'd be feeding them and such. You're exactly right. They should have just left it at her dropping mice in there, and we didn't have to see the the yeah, rest it, of it. But I'm just saying, I had a less of a problem with this than I did with the snakes. Well, feeding. at least in the context of the story, it makes sense as to why she'd be doing it. And at least watching the snakes feed, it gives you an idea of just how deadly they truly are. But that's like literally the only excuse that I can come up with. Otherwise, it's completely unnecessary and just there to watch animal on animal violence for your entertainment, which is a big fuck you to me as well. Exactly. Uh, then they have some dinner in bed. While they're doing this, Jules grabs a snake. He grabs the mamba. So uh, he lets it go into the room as the ladies are sleeping um jerry wakes up and they turn on the light and they see the snake on the bed uh jerry of course freaks out and the, as was foreshadowed earlier in one of the clips the mamba will only kill uh when it senses uh for food or when it senses fear so it bites and kills her yeah and the attack uh, is actually the little snake goes after her a couple of times I don't believe that that green that snake was actually a green mamba. I don't think they would have let it get that uh, close to her. No, I, I believe that is a very just a garden snake. But right. you know, it's, they they needed a snake they could use and let it's loose a super on people. Cute little green snake is definitely not as deadly as it looks. There, it's so adorable. I just want to snuggle with it. But it, yeah, it bites her a couple. I'll times. name it George. I'm gonna pet it and love it. And I'll name it George. And I won't hurt it at all, and I won't let it bite Ava's girlfriends. <laughs> um, the doctor shows up, and that is our next clip. There's nothing anybody could do. A mamba's poison is absolutely deadly. Where's the snake? What happened to it? I put it back in the cage. You did? Weren't you afraid of it? No, I'm not afraid. I can't imagine how it managed to get free. Judas and Jules went away on business and left me to take care of the snakes. Tonight I opened the cages to feed them, but I'm sure I closed them with care. But when I put the member back, the cage was open. Open? But how? Who could possibly have done that if there was nobody else at home? I don't know. The cage was open. I've got to file a report to the police. Fortunately, I'm a good friend of the inspector. He won't make any difficulty. The death of the poor girl was accidental. Besides, as I understand it, she must have been all alone. Okay, we may know what already happened because we saw Jules do it, but come on, folks. Yeah, come on. <laughs> we know. We, we, we know. Yeah, like, it's, like a... it's clear they're even, the way that they're stating it, they obviously know so, there's some other foul play going on because she's sure she closed all the cages. She didn't even feed the fucking mamba a rat, did she? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't even uh, think she fed the fucking thing a mouse. No, I, I, or at least we didn't get to see it. Yeah, I mean, they're heavily um, implying it, but whatever. Yeah, right. Uh, so anyway, we cut to uh, 
Uh, Ava and Judas are having dinner, and that is our next clip. Well, I brought you here because I thought it might be an appropriate place to say goodbye. Goodbye? I don't understand. Well, Judas has been talking to me, explained about how you want to be together. Judas, I didn't want you to hear it from him. <laughs> what difference does that make? tells me you're planning a trip. I'm afraid it was my idea. Just an excuse to... To leave? I told you from the beginning you were free to leave whenever you wanted to. It appears you want to now, huh? I'm sorry. I've told Jules he can take off as much time as he wants. The trip is a, a present for me, kind of a parting gift. Thank you. Have you made your plans? Yes. I picked out the places I want to visit. Most of all, I'd like to go home. To the island where I was born. What did you expect to find there? I'm not quite sure. And Jules? What are your plans for him? That's my secret. Okay, without totally revealing what's about to happen in the film, do you feel like Judas knows what's up and he's giving her his okay here? I don't think he knows quite as much as you think he does. Okay. But I think he definitely has a suspicion. But I also think he has a suspicion that his brother, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, did cause the injury to Candy and and uh, Jerry's death. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if he knows exactly what she's planning. I know, but I think he, he knows about the revenge. He knows. Like he knows about the revenge. He just doesn't yeah. know how horrific the revenge is going to be. I, th- I and I don't think he even knows that it's going. She's going to. She has a plan not to give it away. A plan to kill Jules. Maybe just a plan to to use him up or something like that. But I also don't think even it, that maybe Judas knows it all. But I don't think Jules is the type of guy who will listen to his brother. No, no. I'm saying, like, Judas is giving Eva the okay here. Oh, I don't think he's giving her an okay at all. No. No. I think think Judas, though, again, knows people. He's not going to be able to talk her out of anything she's going to do. And he's not going to be able to talk Jules out of going, no matter how logical it is, for nothing else than because Jules will never listen to Judas because he doesn't want to know that Judas is smarter than him. But that's going to get kind of eradicated at the end of the movie. Right, but I also feel like at this point when I'm watching the movie, like he knows and then also he wants a little payback because he doesn't like the fact that the snakes, the things that he actually loves the most in this world, were used in such a manner for petty grievances that his brother had. So I feel like he has, because again, he knows people, and I feel like he's like, well, whatever it is, he's got it coming. That's just how I'm interpreting it. I, I, I agree with you. Like I can see your viewpoint on it that he doesn't. He doesn't yeah. know. He just knows that he's in. He's powerless to stop it, and he's also not that attached to his brother. Is how you're looking at it, or the way I'm picking it up from you. And then, then for yeah. me, I think he knows what's coming, and he, or at least he knows that there's a revenge and a death in store for Jules. And because he could have caused both the Mamba and the other snake to be put down because they attacked a human, depending upon the laws where they're at, you know, he probably yeah. wants a little payback himself, and is basically not necessarily giving her a blessing, but being like, I can't do it myself. He's my uh, brother, so you go ahead, uh, Ava. I think there's maybe a little bit of that, but just because what happens at the end of the movie, I believe that maybe he has an idea, or maybe he doesn't have an idea that she wants revenge, but I think he has a full idea that he doesn't trust her anymore, and I think he doesn't think Jules should trust her, but Jules will never listen to him. Okay, yeah. And, And how about this, and how about this? I don't think he trusts Jules anymore either because he knows Jules as a hand in all this. So I think now is a part where he's kind of, instead of giving his blessing, I think Judas is going into self-preservation mode. He he knows he's in waters. He could, like I said, he knows people. So I think he knows he's in pariah-filled water right now. And he's just going to go ahead and let the two pariah go off with one another and have one another. All right, fair enough. Let's see here. So we're on vacation now, and Ava is getting a massage, and she likes the dude giving them the massage. And we see Jules is getting jealous of that because Jules is a jealous little prick. 
uh, they decide to go on an island retreat with the masseuse and his brother. While on the island, Jules wakes up to find Ava gone. As he goes looking for her, he finds her on the beach with the two guys. One kissing her uh, and while the other one's playing guitar. He walks down, he starts kissing her, calling her a slut. Uh, and then uh, he is held down by one of the brothers and the other brings a snake out and that is our next clip. I'm telling you! Behind you! No! My God, have you gone mad? Stop them! Stop them! No! My God! Don't be frightened. It isn't poisonous. The sacks of venom have been removed. What are you going to do with it? It's a very special breed. When introduced into the body of a living human, it eats its way out because it has an inbred desire to get free. What are you talking about, Eva? Oh, God. What do you mean? On the island where I was born, they have an ancient custom for dealing with liars and murderers. You're the murderer, Jules. No. You killed Jerry, and now you're going to die by a method called putting the devil into a man uh. to set him free. Uh. This is the devil. Uh. And you're the man. You're mad. Uh. It will rid you of evil and all bad. No, you're bad. Let me out of here. Let me go. Oh, it was just a game. I didn't want to kill her. I swear I didn't, Eva. I was just doing it for kicks. I didn't know she was going to die. I, honest, I didn't. It's too late. Oh. Jules, there's a uh. devil inside you. Oh. And now we're going to let it be free. No, please. I'll do anything you want. But don't do this to me, Eva. No. Holy shit. And that snake goes right up his butthole. Yeah, so they got him pinned down, and it looks like he's about to get prison raped. And she goes through on that spiel. And the more she's describing it, the more I'm like, yeah, this is a fitting end for Jules. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Uh, he's been an insufferable prick all his life. And... Uh, caused uh, one girl to almost die and caused another girl's death uh, for what he called kicks. Even if he didn't mean to do it, he still fucking did it. So, uh, yeah, uh, Jules kind of got what he fucking deserved. So I hope he enjoyed the first getting anally raped by a snake and then second having that snake eat his way out of whoa, his whoa. stomach. The snake didn't anally rape him. He was being violated anally by having an animal shoved into the orifice. Clip. I guess you would say the two brothers <laughs> The two brothers raped him. Well, I, I don't know. It, it's an assault of a sexual nature, sure, but this is more medieval torture. <laughs> Okay, so he's sexually assaulted by two guys using a snake. Yeah, that works. All right, there we go. I mean, let's be clear uh, about what's actually happening here. They're shoving a giant snake yeah. that's been depoisoned up his ass so it will eat its way out. And by the way, this is somewhat of a cobra-headed snake, so that's really going to hurt on the front end. <laughs> the hood goes down, dude. I'm just saying, I, d I don't think enough. Well, yeah, if they're trying to <laughs> shove it in there, it's going to get pissed and it's going to pop the hood out, and then that's going to be a real problem. But yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, I so. feel bad more for the snake <laughs> than Jules at this point. Yeah, the the snake's having a real hard time of it. Um, I feel bad for it. It's going to get claustrophobic and stuff. <laughs> Run into Lemmy Winks on the way and figure out the path it needs to go to get out. Yeah, right. Um, so we come back into the city, and Ava visits Judas in our final clip. I'm here. Slowly. He sent it me again. No, this time I did. Why did you come back? Did you receive my telegram? Yes. Jules was your brother. And I thought you should know how he died and why. And that you killed him. And how. He deserved to die. When we first met, I told you that I admired courage. Courage and cruelty aren't the same thing. You've changed. I think you enjoyed watching Jules die. Perhaps you're right. I did. You once accused me of treating you as part of my collection. 
Well, it's true. For a time, they were my only friends. And I met you, and... For a while, it seemed as if my life began anew. Then you went away, and it ended. Now you've come back. Why? What did you expect to find? Judas is difficult to explain. But I thought it could be all the same again. I'm sorry. It's all over. No, that's a bummer. He can't get over his brother's death. Because she did enjoy it, it made a different aspect to her that he doesn't hasn't seen before. Yeah, like you um, said, she's changed. He's got a point. She fell in love, and losing that made her into a different person, and he can't abide by that, basically. Not that she murdered his brother, that she changed and was so cruel about it. Yeah, and enjoyed it. A little too you know, w- Yeah. Um, but she desperately still wants to be his friend. She has to dance with the mamba. She takes it. He pleads with her not to, but as she dances with it, it she must have felt an image of fear because it does strike and bite her, killing her. Judas replaces the snake into its uh, cage and calls the doctor roll credits. Wow. Not where I thought that ending was going at all the first time I watched it, that's for sure. When I got done watching it, I went, fuck. You know, besides the snake thing, you know, the, the killing of the snake, that's a you know, for being what was supposed to be, you know, naked chicks movie, fuck, that was good. Yeah, it's got a really interesting plot to it. Um, the downsides we've already discussed, and I feel like we could get an animal animal cruelty free version of this that wouldn't fucking matter at all to watch, and you could have everything else in the film without those yeah. elements in. And it actually is a really good film, especially that ending. Just kind of turned it all around. You know, she the, uh, the the dance and then her death. You know, at the end. Uh, yeah, just great. Uh, I think it helps that you have a, a, a an above decent actor like Jack Palance. Say what you will, I think he's an above decent actor in this movie. Helps. He definitely is not in full Jack <sighs> Palance mode. Yes, yeah. he's actually this is Jack Palance of old, old that we're used to seeing in older movies. That's when he gave a fuck more, I guess. Yeah, probably. So, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean. Don't get me wrong, it's Laura Jenser, so come on. But other than that, I actually liked this story. I actually liked the intrigue behind it, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's shocking that it was I w- this good. I would have loved. It really is. Yeah, I would have loved if they hadn't made it so obvious Jules was doing things, like just show hands, so you didn't know if it was Jules or Judas. Ah, uh, well, I think the reason it wasn't so done in quite that aspect and they were making it so obvious is the director. Joe D'Amato is more well known for pornography. We've seen a we've seen yeah. another film of his on here that was one of his non pornography outputs, and that was Anthropophagus. Yes, Anthropophagus. Anthropophagus. Right. <laughs> um, which has also got a pretty decent storyline. It's just kind of a little juxtaposed, weird, and gives reveals at the wrong times. I think and stuff. Um, this film, the plot line in it is actually pretty excellent, as you said, and every, everything that you had to say about it is pretty much how I feel as well. So instead of just echoing it all, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Like, I really enjoyed this film. I, I do see a lot of what you're talking about where they could have used a little more suspense and at least one or two of the kills. But I mean, when you already blow the wad of showing Jules, you know, attacking the girl with using the snake, yeah. you're going to suspect that's Jules who's doing the thing with the green mamba anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it might not be, yeah, all that. Uh, yeah, I guess it, in the end, because that seems pretty important to have Candy get hurt right. there. Well, if, if they so did it your I, way, it would have been a fucking giallo where they could have had a black glove killer that's handling the snakes and, like, you know, doing the teasy, sexy thing with the girl with the black gloves. And then the yeah. then the girl gets bit by the snake. And maybe maybe that's what Jack Palance thinks is sex or his character thinks is sex. Like, you could have a story done that way. But it would have been way more giallo and a little less character study, kind of like what we got with a lot of nudity and girl-on-girl action. I agree. Uh, so you know what? The way it was done, just fine by me. Um, again, I, I I thought it was a thoroughly entertaining movie with a with a good story behind. Yeah, it. Yeah, I was expecting we were going to get another one of like uh, Christina type films when we were watching this this week, only with Laura Jemsner, which would be an upgrade in and of itself. But it turns out yeah. we got a pretty damn good fucking story with Laura Jemsner in it, which is a definite upgrade in and of itself. A whole upgrade from Christina. So thank you, thank <laughs> yes, you, movie. But I still love. 
Bill Shepard very dearly. Uh, she has a place in my heart right alongside of course. Of course. <laughs> and, and by the way, speaking of uh, Joel Shepard and the movie Christina, Darren proved you wrong by that poster that he created. The title well, I came up with last week that you said was too long to fit on a poster, Darren fit it. Oh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break here. We're going to play a promo for a podcast that's just about to be released. I mean, it's coming up real soon, folks, so definitely check it out. It's from our boy, The Witch. And we'll have a little bit more music when we come back that is fitting of the film. And when we come back, we will do some PSYOP news. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com, as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. fits in it sounds relatively similar to some of the music that was played in the film so i, I got as yeah. close as i could for public domain there you go <laughs> until i can actually like have the time to write songs for each individual movie we cover which i will never have the time to do that's the best i'm gonna get <laughs> but the best we're gonna get tonight is for you to give me some psyop news Robert Ward gave us this one uh, from Sora News 24. Oh, I'm intrigued. Uh, yeah. A uh, Japanese adult video company offers 200 free movies as pandemic support. The site crashed on the same day. I have uh, a ragey direction. They uh, starts out with uh, this article. I'm going to say it was written by... <laughs> it's written uh, by uh, Master Blaster. I'm not kink-shaming so, well, you on your death fetish. Uh So anyway, staying at home is fast becoming the global pastime, and for many, the limits of four walls can make for a stressful time. And sometimes sometimes that stress can keep building and building, pushing harder and harder and faster and faster until you're just ready to Circle jerk! Circle jerk! (laughs) To aid in this, the Japanese adult video producer Soft On Demand, or SOD, is sending out emergency rations in the form of 200 titles that can be viewed completely free of charge from uh, March 13th until March 31st. All blowjobs should be teethy. Purely in the spirit of information gathering and analysis, I did, this person, uh, Master Blaster, decided to check out the special website Sod had erected to provide these uh, free uh, films. Uh, However... Jerk off in a Petri dish. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, by the time they uh, got to the site, it appears a large number of people decided to take Sod up on their offer, and as expected, they fled the site to the point of crashing. God doesn't see what this, you do, Adel. This is severely disappointing for Master Blaster's job. I mean, and stuff. yes, we're looking for titties, but we want those titties wrapped in a heavy plot. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, just fucking anyway, incest already. Anyway, according to reports, the way to access these videos is to first register as a SOD member, and once complete, 200 select titles can be purchased for zero yen, or zero US dollars. Uh, also, the first 200 members to purchase a free title will receive a SOD basara. Violate her body which and is, make sure she can't leave. Which is a masturbation aid, much like a ten- tenga. 
but deceptively designed to look like a regular plastic drink bottle. Oh, oh, like the flashlight, flashlight kind of deal. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to uh, get arrested. However, I'm grab this guy's dick. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what was that? I'm already getting arrested. I might as well grab this guy's dick. Motherfuck. <laughs> That's like my favorite thing you said last week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, however, judging by the crash website, that ship has already sailed. It's extremely. It's a, still an extremely generous offer by the erotic industry leader, though. Readers of the news uh, were also deeply touched in a very special place by these sensitive moves of All Saad. lesbians are preying on young women. Here are just some quotes. <laughs> Here are just some quotes from people. <laughs> oh, this God. is like traces Here's of death. Some... Fucked a porno. Here's some quotes from people uh, talking about this. Tissues are going to sell out now. Sod is amazing. It's the spread of the Euronavirus now. Uh, Porn will save the world. That one's a good one. Sex drive is stronger than coronavirus. True. Arg, it's too crowded and crashed. <laughs> I hope... The- <laughs> I'm not saying Come that. On, read that. It. Come <laughs> on, Come <laughs> on. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Come on, if you read it, I'll say it. I'll say it too if you read it. It better be a clip for both sure, of us then. Not? All right. <laughs> this is the next one. I hope they have gay stuff too. <laughs> I hope they have gay stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> Got right in the middle of that one. Whoa. <laughs> Pump the brakes, kid. <laughs> you can't fear the clip because if you fear the clip, that just makes me want yeah. the clip more. I'm like a I'm like a uh, I'm like a green mamba, Matt, for clips. If you're afraid of the <laughs> clips, I want them more and I will attack. So more is I wonder if they if the new sauna lady is part of it. And also I can use it while teleworking. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, this is but the latest of the free digital offerings for housebound people in Japan. But sadly, demand for high quality on demand adult, adult content appears <laughs> far from satisfied. Uh, perhaps other companies will be willing to pitch in during this terrible pandemic. Until then, Master Blaster vows that he shall continue to try access Sod's free site and not rest until he's uncovered the truth about this free campaign and learns all the details. Sure. Then, about five minutes afterwards, he'll probably take a nap. <laughs> and then have a sandwich and some electrolytes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think it's great that this company's doing that, and I know that is it Pornhub gave like Italy like for the time being like they have free access to like all the premium content and stuff like that because they're yeah. trapped inside. Pornhub decided to do that for that region. Yep. Um. So and we're we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of I don't want to say generosity, but like ways of trying to help folks like this from all sorts of industries, not just the folks involved in the adult entertainment industry, but. It's interesting to hear that they were giving a masturbatory aid as well. This seemed geared towards uh, men that are cooped up and can't get out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it probably is more towards men. Uh, but, you know, if the, there's an occasional lady who wants adult content, uh, you know, hopefully they can yeah, get it. the masturbatory aid sounded more like a fleshlight. I don't know if they were offering ladies a similar package yeah. for, like, a dildo or something. You're very true. It seems to be a sexist offer. It's not necessarily a sexist offer. Maybe they just know their clientele because, you know, more men <laughs> tend to consume porn than women, right? That's true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of usually... Go ahead, disagree with us, ladies. The most Let us know. Direction right now, or challenge us. <laughs> consume more porn than we do. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? <laughs> he must have an incredibly long penis. That's beside the point, Lee. I do. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's micro penis time for Matt. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm going to make it a, a lighter show this week. Uh, a little bit clip quicker because uh you know it's fucking wednesday and i gotta get this out by sunday so let's cut it off here <laughs> yeah right good yeah, idea so we're gonna play the ending legion promo we're gonna have a little bit more music that fits well with the themes of emmanuel and the deadly black cobra and when we come back we will close out this fucking show if you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, 
obsessive cinema discourse pick six movies the podcast by the cemetery the podcast on haunted hill the psycho semantic podcast rick radio house of wax dude looks like the 80s rabbit and red radio the shade cast short bus cinema two drink minimum commentaries the vd clinic who will survive horror podcast and which versus the doomsday clock with such a widespread of shows there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with horror politics movies books sex music commentaries health video games kaiju action news comedy and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world we are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world check us out at www.legionpodcast.com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found more to that than being poor i thought that fit well with the whole classist type thing that we had going on in this oh, yeah. flick so definitely and that is apparently public domain it was on the public domain site so don't at me bro that's you know your your shit's on the public domain site and if you didn't want it there take it up with them so we have quite the meme game going on right now in the cinema psyops groups i'm very proud of all of you you guys are stepping it the fuck up and this is so much fun i've been sharing a lot of stuff to instagram that folks have either messaged me or put into the group and then i've like repurposed and shared on the Instagram as well, so I'm very proud of all of you. I don't, I don't have specific names, but you know who you are, and I give you the credit whenever I'm posting them. Best way to find those posts whenever I repost things is to follow us on Instagram. We are cinema underscore psyops, and I mean the royal we because I run that shit like this show. Yeah, you run bar Now, if you want to find our specific episodes, the best place to go is legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. You got those high quality, tasty ass fucking memes? You're going to put those in the cinema psyops group. Only the tasty memes. Absolutely. Now, some folks are putting that on the Cinema PsyOps page timeline, which is fine. I'll just repost it on the group for you. But, you know, you want to put it in the group because that's where the most people are going to get to see it for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'm on Facebook as Court PsyOps. Matt's on Facebook as Matt PsyOps. And by on, I mean there's a profile that exists that he doesn't check often. Yeah, that's that's about right. <laughs> you can email feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com. Let him know he's doing a great job and that he needs to take some of the pressure off his work life. I'm trying, man. I can't handle it. Crack it under the pressure. Email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. Let him know that this self-isolation he's into needs to never stop, and he should always stay home because the world's better off with him at home. No, I don't think that's right. I, I, I believe that's true. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you can twit a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the hate-filled shit fest that knows more about film than you that is Twitter. I'm at court underscore psyop, and he is at psyop Matt. You can also slide into our DMs there with some photos of some very lovely ladies. Yeah, or, right in the yeah, DMs. Yeah, or if there's something that you think we might be interested in, you can slide that into our DMs. That works as well as the cinema underscore psyops Instagram as well, the email that I talked about, or a direct message via Facebook. And I've gotten some of those as well from some of our very lovely, lovely listeners who have sent me links and all sorts of other wonderful sites to behold. So thank you, folks. You are brightening my life and timeline. Hell to the yeah. While everybody's out there hunkering down and self-isolating, make sure to take care of yourself while you kick the fuck out of this week and make it your best.